Just when you thought Prime Minister Justin Trudeau couldn't act worse, he got caught scheming with media big shots like the CBC to fool Canadians in the next election. Trudeau secretly threw a lavish $11,000 garden bash at Rideau Cottage, inviting his journalist pals to work together and plan his 2025 re-election scheme. Over fancy food and drinks billed to taxpayers, Trudeau plotted with reporters to spread propaganda, downplay scandals, and trick voters into letting him stay in power. The exclusive guest list of mainstream media outlets were more than happy to play along, already known for giving glowing coverage of Trudeau with little accountability. This obscene misuse of money shows Trudeau's true colors. A desperate politician who will overspend and ditch integrity to keep his job. He seems to think there are separate rules for out-of-touch liberal elites who can secretly scheme up election tricks on the taxpayer's dollar. What exactly did Trudeau offer the media buddies attending for their cooperation? How far will his propaganda go to fool Canadians who are struggling with a cost-of-living crisis? What other shady schemes is Trudeau cooking up with his journalist allies? Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the Liberal government hosted a lavish garden party for mainstream media allies at the Prime Minister's cottage, costing taxpayers over $11,000. This extravagant soiree for Trudeau's journalist friends demonstrates the cozy and inappropriate relationship between this government and their media cronies. The exclusive event was held at Rideau Cottage, the Prime Minister's current residence in Ottawa. In total, the one-day shindig cost taxpayers a whopping $11,651, according to information obtained through an access to information request. CTF Federal Director Franco Terrazano rightly said, struggling taxpayers shouldn't be paying for higher-paid politicians to network with the media. He also added, how about we balance the budget before politicians use taxpayers' money to throw a party? The guest list reveals everything. Only Trudeau-friendly media outlets, including the CBC, Toronto Star, CTV, Global News, Canadian Press, and Globe and Mail were invited to this exclusive event. Coincidentally, these are the same media organizations that consistently provide fawning coverage of Trudeau and rarely hold his government accountable for scandals and failed policies. In attendance mingling with ministers and liberal staffers were dozens of leading journalists and producers from these mainstream outlets. CBC stars such as Rosemary Barton and Catherine Cullen rubbed shoulders with their liberal government sources while enjoying fine food and drink courtesy of taxpayers. The irony is rich considering many of these journalists are paid by taxpayers themselves through the CBC's billion-dollar annual subsidy. In effect, struggling Canadian taxpayers are funding both the salaries of privileged CBC journalists and the lavish parties where they bond with Trudeau liberals. This represents an alarming lack of journalistic independence and integrity. The media is supposed to cover politicians, not socialize and party with them at taxpayer-funded soirees. This does a disservice to Canadians who depend on reporters to hold leaders accountable, not become overly cozy with them. Based on the luxury menu and extravagant arrangements, taxpayers were billed for quite the swanky affair. The booze list consisted of fine wines like Sauvignon Blanc and Cabernet Sauvignon, plus craft beers from trendy local breweries. Trudeau reportedly told the National Post's Brian Pacifium, the napkins provided with the various past appetizers seemingly were still emblazoned with 24 Sussex in gold lettering, reportedly in an attempt to put a dent in the boxes of the things. The food included fancy dishes like fresh pasta made from huge wheels of Parmesan cheese, shrimp sliders, tuna tartare, and salted caramel ice cream. The $11,651 bill also included nearly $5,000 just for the food. How many struggling Canadian families eat such lavish meals during high prices? In attendance, along with scores of journalists and liberal staffers, were several cabinet ministers, including Jonathan Wilkinson, Dominic LeBlanc, and Stephen Gilbo. Nothing spells unethical quite like environment minister Mr. Gilbo's sipping craft beer with reporters covering his file the same day as releasing new climate regulations. The Trudeau government has made no secret about playing favorites with media outlets that provide positive coverage while shutting out those who dare ask tough questions, they have faced criticism over grant programs that reward friendly journalists and publications. Earlier this year, CEO Catherine Tate felt entitled to an outrageous bonus payout of $14.9 million, while many workers in the media sector were laid off.
Many raise worries that the historic media bailout would hurt journalistic freedom and honesty by making news groups dependent on the government that pays them. Optics like this garden party schmooze event only strengthen those ideas. This is part and parcel with the Trudeau brand and track record. As a trust fund millionaire who inherited his political power, excess, and entitlement come naturally to him. He sees nothing wrong with whining and dining his media cronies on the taxpayer dime as Canadians struggle with inflation and unaffordable housing. He operates as if there are two sets of rules, one for the governing liberals and their friends and another for regular hardworking Canadians. At this private liberal party pretending to be a garden party, Trudeau surely asked his media pals for ideas on how to trick Canadian voters again in 2025. With conservatives quickly becoming more popular, he is desperate to hold on to power no matter what. Trudeau probably pleaded with his journalist friends for advice on how to hide and minimize his constant ethics problems and scandals until the next election. He knows the fawning reporters who attended will obediently forget stories about liberal corruption to protect their beloved leader. No doubt Trudeau also wanted input on how to falsely paint himself as a champion of the middle class and friend to working Canadians. This is a tall task considering he has presided over historic inflation, unaffordable housing, and a recession devastating families. But with the liberal media's help spinning propaganda, Trudeau thinks he can trick voters into believing he feels their pain. The best part is that Trudeau plans to make taxpayers who are barely getting by pay for his re-election campaign. He will send tens of millions from the public money to run attack ads against conservatives and gain support among naive Canadians who don't know his terrible record. The journalists at the party surely encouraged this outrageous plan to make struggling people pay for liberal campaigning. No taxpayer money was held back in giving journalists food and drink to get their loyalty for 2025. Trudeau is determined to end up on the winning side of a supposedly free and fair election, even if he has to buy it. He aims to finish the destruction of Canada that he started eight years ago. The Trudeau government's cozy relationship with mainstream media outlets like the CBC and Toronto Star stands in stark contrast to its treatment of rebel news. While whining and dining friendly reporters at lavish taxpayer-funded garden parties, the liberals go out of their way to restrict access and coverage from critics like Rebel. The Trudeau government's censorship of critics extends to social media harassment and restricting access. Multiple high-ranking liberal cabinet ministers have openly blocked journalists from Rebel News from viewing and interacting with their official social media accounts. Rebel founder and owner Ezra Levant said, we couldn't read anything, we couldn't reply, and of course we couldn't ask him journalistic questions on Twitter. We were effectively kicked out of the public square, which is what Twitter has become. And he added, We were banned from a government service just because we disagreed with a politician. The Environment Minister Stephen Gilbo boldly blocked rebel news owner Ezra Levant from following his official X account. This account shares government news. Blocking rebel news stopped them from seeing Gilbo's tweets about new environmental rules and plans, they also prevented Rebel News from asking questions or making Gilbo explain his actions on Twitter. This is a platform he uses to talk to Canadians. The federal court harshly criticized Gilbo's actions. They ordered him to quickly unblock Rebel News and pay $20,000 as punishment. The court confirmed that a government minister blocking a news outlet from getting public information and interacting on their official account for government work goes against the Constitution. Yet despite this precedent and court order, other liberal cabinet ministers like Marcy Ian apparently feel emboldened to follow in Gilbo's footsteps. They continue this censorship by blocking rebel news reporters from their Twitter accounts. Blocking accredited journalists from receiving basic public information from ministers they are tasked to cover is an assault on press freedoms. Especially when ministers use social media to make government announcements, blocking critics like rebel news deliberately impedes journalists' ability to inform Canadians and hold power to account. Ministers blocking unfavorable media voices they disagree with or find inconvenient demonstrates petty intolerance. An independent media fulfilling its watchdog role over government is vital to a functioning democracy. The Trudeau liberals blocking critics and restricting access reveals an authoritarian streak. Rebel reporters daring to question liberal cabinet ministers have also faced arrests and legal harassment. Rebel reporter David Menzies was arrested a few weeks ago for simply seeking answers from Deputy PM Christia Freeland at a public event. How come the IRDC is not a terrorist group? Why is your government supporting Islamo-Nationalism? What? You've been What are you doing? Arrest for assault. Why are you pushing me? You're under arrest for assault. Who are you? You're under arrest for assault. Please. Police, you're under arrest. How am I under arrest? You bumped into me. You pushed into me. You bumped. Sir. I was just scrubbing. I got my credentials here, and you just bumped into me. So excuse Police, me. Police, you're under arrest. What is your name and your badge? 
Why is your name in your badge? You've been told you're under arrest. Why am I under arrest? He, 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 he blocked my way. What? I was just scrumming uh, Christian Freeland. I'm a, I'm a police officer. You're under arrest. What is your name in your badge? You've been assaulting the police officer. How is that possible? The outrageous arrest was conducted by the RCMP security detail protecting Freeland. This shows the lengths the liberals will go to silence and intimidate unfavorable coverage. This obscene misuse of taxpayer funds to wine and dine select journalists reveals just how out of touch and unethical the Trudeau liberals have become. Struggling Canadians dealing with a recession, inflation, and unaffordable housing do not want their money wasted on lavish parties for media and political elites. Canadians deserve a free press that will hold leaders accountable regardless of ideology or partisanship. The Ottawa Press Gallery should not allow themselves to be influenced by luxury taxpayer-funded parties with ministers. Accepting what amounts to liberal bribes only corrodes journalistic integrity. The days of taxpayers unwittingly bankroll and back-scratching liberal parties and media junkets must end. We need to clean up the culture of entitlement that has infected Ottawa under Trudeau's watch. Politicians seem to have forgotten they serve the people, not the other way around. Well, that's all for now. What secret deals and stories were discussed between Trudeau and his media cronies over fine wines and fancy food paid for by Canadians? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.